Hello, everyone. In this section of the Technology Reboot Camp, we're joined with joined by Kobe Bone, who's CEO of Tri-State Digital Cinema Services, and he's going to go over server SMS and TMS rebooting uh, procedures. Kobe, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, this is an exciting time and helping everybody out. We're all in the same boat together, so I'm, uh, I'm excited. All right. So what can we do with the servers? What do you got to look for when we reboot servers? Well, let's see here. Um, on this, when you are rebooting the servers and the TMS, you want to make sure that uh, everything's connecting. Um, and on my next slide here, we uh, kind of go through that. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that everything else is powered on the projector, uh, network devices, POS systems. You got to make sure all that stuff's done. Um, it's a good idea to have the TMS on at the same time. So it can start uh, syncing with the POS system and possibly start adjusting the the times for the movies that you're wanting to show. Even if you're doing a test case, you want to make sure that the POS is transferring to the TMS. Um, if you have any player servers using external storage, you want to make sure that uh, all storage devices are powered on before you power on the server the projectors. Um, with the uh, with the projector and the IMS models, with the Dolby IMS 1000, 2000, 3000, and the GDCs. Uh, 3000s, 4000s, and the SR1000s, uh, they power on with the projector. So as soon as you turn the projector on, it goes through its process and the projector and server should automatically marry. Um, once the projector is booted up, uh, you want to make sure that the power to the players are on with the servers. So that means that um, Doremi DCP 2000s, the GDC uh, SA SX 2000s, and the XX 2000 ARs, along with the Dolby DSS DSP 100s and 200s, um, are powered on right afterwards. Now, uh, pretty much everybody should know where the power switch is. The Dolby DSS DSP, uh, once you plug in a power uh, cord to the back, it automatically comes on. So you don't have really much to do with that. Um, when everything powers up, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you can log in and check for any warnings. Uh, pretty much then is when it's going to give you, you know, s &M warnings or different kind of connection warnings. Um, if that happens, uh, you know, you can go ahead and start contacting your uh, service provider, your NOC, whoever your go-to point of contact is. Um, some of the things that you want to watch for are definitely RAID warnings. Um, and connection and transfer errors. Um, if something happens, then you can, if you feel comfortable and know how to pull logs, you can pull logs and pull them to your your service provider, your NOC. Uh, you know, you want to indicate the time, the date, what screen, and what the error was if you contact them via phone or via email. And then also, uh, you can call them and they can log in remotely. Um, I know that you know some some uh, companies even down to the technician can can log in and make sure that they're working with you or your screens that are having issues. Um, you wanna watch for SMS notifications, which could be anything from SM mismatch, missing, unable to connect, missing certificate. Uh, with the Dolby MS, normally it's an SM1 LED that's on the front plate that pops up. Um, it could indicate battery failures, loss of IDs, it's not connecting um, down to the media block need, might need to be replaced because it might have not been powered down properly or powered back on and cycled the way it should be. Um, so you want to make sure that those things are working. Watch for raid drive warnings. Um, that's all too common, um, especially after a long boot down period. Uh, sometimes it can be worked around if you've only got one raid that is bad versus uh, one raid drive versus uh, two raid drives, you can still play a movie. You just have to unmount it, which service providers should be able to help out with that um, or Knox. And then watch for device connection areas. You want to make sure that your projector, automation, audio, and closed caption devices upon playback are all connected. So that way it works seamlessly as the way it's supposed to. Um, with the screen management systems, the SMS log retrieval, uh, pretty straightforward. It's right there. Um, how to do that. You just need to log into the system and you can pull it. But nine times out of 10, most everybody's working with a service provider or a NOC uh, center that can go in and do that for you. If not, they're more than welcome to, uh, you know, more than happy to walk you through and how to be able to pull that, put it to a thumb drive and email it. So those are some pretty simplistic things. Um, 
once everything you've got powered up and it looks green, uh, you want to make sure that you start doing tests. So that means you want to send a test, uh, a test schedule to your TMS from your POS. You want to ingest some content. You can do it locally from a CRU drive, or you can do it over the network from a satellite server. And then try testing some content. Pick a couple of trailers, move them to screen number one. Pick a couple of different trailers, move them to screen number three. Um, that way, you're not moving all the same things across, and you can kind of keep track of what's transferring, what's not. Um, then you want to make sure that you got the uh, the SMN te SMS tests are going good. So that means testing your uh, automation controls, make sure your lights go up and down, your sound switches, make sure you can do all of that from the Do Re Mi uh, or Dolby and your GDCs. Uh, explanations are right there. You just have to execute the micro, do it from a local level, and then you can start working with the uh, with the cues inside of the system because you want to make sure it's working at a fundamental level first. Um, and then, you know, if you don't have masking, don't have to worry about it. But uh, you want to test everything locally. And then after that, you want to do some playback tests. Uh, you can play, you know, test with a trailer first. Just make sure it works. Um, you know, and, and, you know, you can turn everything on, open everything up, turn on your lights, play a trailer. And then if you want to, you can put some cues in it. And then underneath that, uh, test some encrypted content. If you don't have any encrypted content, uh, to the side is a place that you can go and get some, some test encrypted content, put some cues into it, make sure it functions as it's supposed to. Um, and then there also, you can test the content. If the, the test content is encrypted, um, it's all right there on where to download and how to test all of that stuff. Moving on to the next slide, uh, you know, when to call a tech. Um, obviously, there's going to be issues. Um, hopefully there's not, and hopefully it's limited if it is. But if it is, you want to kind of see what's going on. I would write it down, write down the screen, write down the date and time in case somebody needs to pull logs. But you want to start, you know, calling your your uh, service organi organization, whether you wait and te you test everything out and then say, okay, on screen one, this is what's having problems. Screen two, screen three, whatever. Um, you can do it at one time or you can go line item by line item. It might make it easier for your service provider if you kind of put a honey-do list together and give it to them and let them work on it while you're working on getting the rest of everything up, back up and running. But content transfers, um, you want to call on KDM, doesn't transfer to one or more houses. Um, your screens aren't connecting to the TMS. Once it powers up, it should automatically connect. But if it's not, you might want to call and check. Uh, your SPL is not transferring. Um, if you've got any SM related warnings you want to call because then that way they can troubleshoot down to, is it software? Is it a player? Is it a projector? Is it hardware? You want to call and, and have them look at it because they can start facilitating if parts are needed and letting you know that. Uh, content storage errors, definitely call. Like I said, you can run on two, but you can't, you can't run on one. So they can unmount it so that way things aren't skipping while stuff's getting ordered and brought in. And then obviously playback test failures, closed captioning not working, which remember, there's a lot of different parts with the closed captioning. So if you've got headsets, make sure the battery's replaced, make sure it's uh, charged. Um, missing image, missing audio, or playback skipping, drop frames, definitely call your service tech. And then on the next page, we've got uh, all the contact information for GDC and Dolby. Here list all the videos uh, that is best practices if you're going to remain closed or troubleshooting uh, tips. They have very, very good uh, content to be able to have that happen, and it works out in your favor. But you definitely want to make sure that you are calling and give yourself enough time because it's already going to be stressful enough with everything else going on. The sooner you can get in and start testing and start engaging the different companies, the better you will be in a long run because you won't feel like you're under the gun and under an extreme amount of stress. You can rely on your partners uh, and your manufacturers and your service providers to help you out the best they can. All right, Kobe. Thank you very much for all of that. That's a lot of information to digest, and uh, hopefully it, it's uh, not as complicated as it as it seems. And I think we'll uh, get a chance if you give yourself enough time to uh, get up on screen with your servers. Thanks again. Not a problem. Thank you.